say, I only came in for a cup of tea. Look, watch it, will you? Okay, okay. You'll feel good when I'm finished with your gorgeous. Oh, look, the other bottle. Now, would you run out and get me another cup of tea? That's not the tea. That's the steam open your pores. It brings all the impurities, the oil, the grease, the groin, the stone, the surface of your face. <laughs> I had my stone to steam open yesterday. When I popped over to Andrews for a cup of coffee. Oh, and Therese Kelly nearly blinded me trying to wipe the eyebrows off me the day before that. Oh, and Nancy Stooley nearly grabbed me out of the truck this morning saying she wanted to do my graze or something. I hate to go out. Well, my dear, by the time I'm finished with you, you're going to be that gorgeous. They'll be coming in from I'm or not gorgeous. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You are, Sarah. No. You're gorgeous. Well, I know that I'm gorgeous. <laughs> you, my dear, you could be dressed in your Goodwill specials and you look like you just stepped right out of a fashion magazine. If I would went around dressed like that, I'd look like a bag lady. <laughs> that store is the best store in the harbor, the second-hand second-look store that Aunt Mame and Nancy Stooley got on the go. Now, see, Nancy went off and did her bookkeeping, and now she's got her own store opened up. And... She, that's the best store, I swear. I just read that the boys' shirt. Two plaid shirts, good, best condition, only two bucks each. Jared tore his sleeves off. It's the folly wears. Thank God for the grunge. That place is a gold one. All the youngsters in the harbor go there. You know, I call this shag that. I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to open my own beauty parlor downstairs in the laundry room. As soon as he gets his car parts moved out of there. <laughs> What are you going to do? Wash the heads in the washer? <laughs> well, how come I got all this solution left over? Oh, now, Mr. Gracie, there's no do anything too fancy. It's big look, you know, you know, normal. Just better. Compound certainly likes the look of you. He's all proud of a sudden now getting right body, body with wish over here every day, and all he has to say, I stare at him in the night. Sarah go to the live club on Saturday night? We went out for a walk yesterday. Good for you! It's about time. You're young, you know. It was only a walk. It wasn't very comfortable either. He kept wanting to go for something to eat. Well, I told him I don't eat with a man on the first date. <laughs> Watching me chew. <laughs> sure, I wouldn't be able to swallow. It wasn't much of a walk either. Harold kept on trailing us to make sure Colin didn't try to pull none. And Mom was up in the window the whole time just watching us with the binoculars. <laughs> we ended up walking back and forth across the cabbage patch 95 times until we go home off out of it. Now that's a sin, Sarah. Let him take you out for dinner. Don't feel right. Feels like I'm cheating or something. Tio's been dead two years. Can't even take his name off the telephone. You know, all the bills still come with his name, you know. Tio Nolan. God, what you, you're pulling the head right off of me. Now, this, this start I'm doing for you is all the rage. The teacher said he thought it a big hair show up there in breath. <laughs> That was why he said, sold his ground fish license so that he could go up and work with his brother Jeff. Yeah, he did. Went month, but he left a month ago. Well, sure, I saw him yesterday. Oh, <laughs> don't be talking. Just wait till I tell you. Now, first off, he never had no guarantee of a job before he left, so manpower wouldn't pay for his way. And when he got his ground fish license, it's just enough for him to settle his loan. But he decided to go anyway. He bought himself four new tires for the truck, got it tuned up, and he left on a Sunday morning to drive up. Got out the short back, just in time to see the ferry pull away from the dock. He had to sleep the whole night in his truck. Well, then he left for the back Monday morning. The ferry got stuck in the ice 18 hours. They never docked in North Sydney until 1 o'clock Tuesday morning. Then when he got off the boat, he drove straight 17 hours, got to Hamilton at 6 o'clock on a Tuesday evening. Yes, but Jeff was only after getting laid off. So next morning, Wednesday morning, Jeff and Bill drive up to Toronto, the 
find out about some construction job or whatever they had on the go up in Mississauga. Well, they get up there and they found out it's all union and they couldn't even get located. And well, my dear Dan, they drove out to Vancouver. Bill uh, Rod Keating was out there working on some big skyscraper or other downtown. He told me he was going to try and get him in on that. Well, they got out of Spark's business and ran out of money. Merkel had to go down to the bank, wired them enough money to get gas to get them into Vancouver. To get out to Vancouver, Rod devised the gun on strike. So they were all back here five days later. And nice trip, though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they call Newfoundlanders lazy. Now, crazy, maybe, but not lazy. And who else would trace halfway around the world on the off chance that there might maybe be a job? <laughs> oh, so that's why Jeff Marsh is back home. <laughs>